Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it is time for a great guy, the Wrath Lord, who absolutely kicks ass. Let me let me start with a demo with the Frost Lich for Moses and 100 Corruption. Um, if you can tell, I do nothing <laughs> except dodge these things. And my friend over here. Is really kicking Frostlix for Moses' ass. Yep. There we are. Goodbye. And look at this. Look at my wall. 12,000. Now, there are some things to note here. And I will show you in a second. Because I got this build from Rexenterex. But they changed it up a little bit. He's going to die now in a second. Um, but this build is absolutely insane and can easily kick a lot of ass, especially in higher corruption as well. Now, my gear isn't even maxed out. Also, this was not what I wanted to have dropped from our Frost Lich, but whatever. Uh, One-handed sword, two-handed staff, one-handed mace, no, no, I want one-handed sword. So. This build is absolutely insane and absolutely easy to farm higher corruption for any one of you. And I have a bunch of uniques here, you don't need all of them, and I guess you just saw how well it actually shreds. Now, you only need this one, Revlot's Harbor, right? If you use the Rune of Ascendance on any helmet, you have a 1 in 22 chance to get it. I actually got it on the first try, yes, you can hate me. I used the Rune of Ascendance and got it straight away. <laughs> Sorry, I guess it's streamer luck or something like that. Um, yeah, and the key thing is the third mentioning from the bottom. You know, if summon Wrath, that's all cool. Increase minion movement speed, minion melee damage, that's all cool. But the key thing is casting summon Wrath instead summons a Wrath Lord. The Wrath Lord scales with your summon Wrath tree and summons other Wraths for you while in combat, that's cool. Um, while at max wraths, the Wrath Lord casts Necrotic Beams and regularly consumes all your non-Wrath minions to empower itself. Gaining temporary maximum health equal to 10% of the maximum health and 10 spell damage for 10 seconds. So, basically... Oh, he's gone now. Okay. Yeah, he dies because of Infernal Shade. So what you do is you cast this guy, our big, big lad over here. This is our Wrath Lord. Then we have Infernal Shade, which we cast on him, which slowly kills him, but that is fine. But it has AoE fire damage, which is great. But the, the biggest thing is actually Dread Shade over here. And especially Dread Shade down here. Wait, they're gonna remove myself for a second. The minion targeted by Dread Shade now always critical strikes, but Dread Shade has a cooldown. This is the absolutely insane thing. And that means Rathlord over here, especially after you kill a bunch of minions. Crits for 100,000 damage, 200,000 damage every now and then. You can increase this even more with your items. And as you could tell, this was Frostlich for Moses on 100 Corruption, so it's not easy. But he easily shred him, and I was just standing next to it, not doing much. The Dread Shade also has other things, because I'm not going to go over all the, the, the whole passive tree in here. Uh, the skill tree, rather. I'm going to put the link down in the description. <clears throat> So you can actually follow it straight to the to the point. But this the egoism thing is the, the most important one. It also has attack speed and all these kind of things, that's all cool. But the egoism one is the important one. And we also have Volatile Zombie. And we skilled it so it's over here, right? Yeah. You summon five zombies per cast. But it die faster, it doesn't matter because he gobbles them up and gets immediate burst on health and damage. So if I cast him, see, he destroyed him right away and now he has more damage and more health. This is the only thing why we do this. Um, it lasts for 10 seconds on him. So we keep casting them every now and then in battle. So he destroys them and then he just keeps shooting his laser beams. The Skelly Mage is really because it is a blink, right? And then he destroys the Skelly Mage as well. That is fine. But it's really only to blink and pull the, the minions with us. That's the idea of it, right? So they stick with us. Now, there's one thing to mention. Currently, the Wrath Lord is a little bit bugged. 
sadly. And when you start a monolith, for example, let's do one. Let's go into a monolith. Uh, yeah, this one, sure. Let's see if I can re reproduce the bug right away. I already sent them a bug report on it. I guess they're going to fix it. But just so you know, if you start and you haven't moved yet, you're right here. Usually what you want to do is you cast your Q, like your Dread Shade on your Wrath Lord. See, I did it, but it didn't work. Because usually it would show here. You need to have him move first, otherwise he doesn't even attack, see? There, there's a bug. If he's just standing around and not doing shit, you gotta move first so he actually moves a few inches. And now if I cast Red Shade on him, see, now the symbol is here. This is the symbol you're looking for. If this is active, your Wrath Lord has Dread Shade for, I believe, 18 seconds or something like that. Um, and yeah, as I said, there is a bug right now. The same happens also if you stand around and you cast your Volatile Zombies right away. Sometimes he vanishes. <laughs> he just explodes and is gone. There is this bug. I don't know why. Um, but it's currently in the game. So, so you gotta be, gotta be a bit careful with that. But yeah, you can tell. And you don't have to do anything, you just stand around and he shreds everyone. No problem. And especially if you keep casting your, your dudes, he destroys. And then he just comes here and wrecks everything easily. This really is the easiest build I've ever played. Now the Shade was ran out again, so I cast it on him again. That's the only thing you have to do. You cast your Volatile Zombie and you cast the Dread Shade on your Revlord. That's all you do. And of course you ditch these attacks. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Very, very easy. Now what I did is, while he fights over here, because usually people run this, Chronostasis as a weapon. Now this build also is built fully around um, Ward, as you can tell. I have 15,000 health, no, 15,000, 1,500 health and 1,600 Ward. Most people run the Chronostasis because it gives you, as you can tell, 56 Ward per second. So if I use this one, you can see my Ward is going up. So this makes you tankier. But I don't like this too much. I mean, if you want to do this, if you if you die often, for example, because you stand in enemy's attacks, then you can use the Chronostasis if you only have this one. But I want the Pact Severance because it gives me, um, as you can tell in the implicit, 145, 100, yeah, 145% increased mini necrotic damage. Because our Wrath Lord scales, as you can tell down here, with minion damage, intelligence damage, intelligence, but it doesn't even say it here for some reason. But I think it says it in the in the passive tree. He does um, necrotic damage. So this actually improved his damage a lot for me. This is why I went with it. What you do in your other items is just minion damage. That's enough. Base minion damage also scales it, but necrotic damage, minion, minion necrotic damage also does a lot to this guy. <clears throat> Uh, everything else we don't really need, but the minion necrotic damage was kind of insane, so I wanted it. What I also did is I got the Ambitions of an Erased Acolyte. It's another um, unique, but the great thing is about at the bottom, it says, when a nearby enemy or ally dies, you gain ward equal to 2% to 6% of its maximum health. This is what gives me a little bit more tankiness. It's less reliant than, for example, the Chronostasis, but this I think you get easier. It's very easy to get, actually, um, as an Acolyte Relic. It's not very rare, I believe. Um, now, mine had Weaver's Will on it. This, this is why I have it as a legendary. But the idea is if you, if your Wrath Lord kills something huge right next to it, maybe I can show it off. If there would be a mage, that's nice. Then I gain ward from that. My, my ward increases from that. And I like this a lot because it can go absolutely insane. I can go to 10k ward. If you saw earlier when I killed my when I killed the Frost Lich. Of course, the due to the water retention you lose it. So it's not permanent. But I kinda like this as a as a relic. It works pretty well. If you find other relics um, better that for example give you more necrotic damage, you can also go with this, of course. That's totally fine. But um, I went with this because I, I like it a lot in what it does. It gives me sort of situational ward. Which is very powerful. Uh, Critical Shrine, we don't really need that. Oh, there's the ambush. 
Sometimes, oh, you see right now, sometimes he's just running around in circles, not actually attacking enemies. See, now I'm full of what? 5,000. For a short period, because a big guy died over here on Reach of the Grave. Um, actually, funny, I should find this right now, right now, because Reach of the Grave is also very great. As you can tell, your minions, spells, and bow attacks deal 96% increased damage, because it's also necrotic spell damage that he's doing. So you can either run the Pact Severance, you can run the Chronostasis, or you can run the Reach of the Grave. They are all great. They all help him. Oh, he's gonna die now. They all help him to do more damage. So that's totally fine. Again, the exemption is if you run Ward as necessary. You don't need to run the Ward. You can also go with other things. But then you don't use the Chronostasis. You just use your Pact Severance, for example. Or the Reach of the Grave. And personally, I wouldn't even go for Ward, like if you want to farm the Exanguinus necessarily because you want to go for the Ward. I think they will nerf it very soon because Ward right now is way too strong, so you're most likely going to nerf it. And I don't, I wouldn't recommend farming for these items right now because most likely you will end up farming for an item that isn't that good anymore. They likely are not going to nerf it to the ground, but still. I also went for the advent of the Erase because most people actually, oh, I don't have the boots here right now. I forgot the boots and um, most people run. So this is where my build is a little bit different. I don't claim that I made this build at all. It was done by Rexantorax and I think some other dude, I forgot his name, Crazy QT or something. Um, this is where Rex got it from. It's another problem in Last Epoch. It's not as crazy yet as it was in Marvel Snap where I started streaming with like the who actually made the build, right? You always have to name the people but after all if you have this helmet i guess most people figured out how to make that build but anyway this is very strong right now and when it comes to the passives you actually have also a bunch in lich but this is really just intelligence because intelligence scales your damage you want to go for your health and spell damage for leech and then we go for these over here more intelligence and vault retention again if you don't go for the vault build you don't go for this, but this is you can figure this out yourself. Necromancer mostly has minion attack speed, minion damage, minion cast speed, minion physical damage, and then we have armor shred as well. Increased health, minion health re reduction doesn't do anything. This is for you, so you actually survive longer. Minion attack speed, it's all minion, all right? Minion damage, necrotic damage, of course, for the minions. Uh, minion necrotic damage again, you max this out, and minion critical multiplier. So it's all minion damage and minion crits and all this kind of stuff. Vault retention, of course, again. Very simple, really, how you how you uh, skill this. Very, very simple. Now, you can go over the Skelly Mage. You can also go for Transplant, right? To have your blink. To, to ditch out of um, dangerous attacks, for example, like with Lagon or something. Um, there is an experimental belt, I believe, which also pulls your minions with you. This is why most people don't go for transplant right away because your minions will just be somewhere else. And then you have this bug where the raffle just circles around but doesn't actually do anything. So, um, yeah, this is also the, the thing you can use. Right? So, that's, I think, pretty much it. I don't think I missed anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Idle, sorry. Um, what you want to go for is just health because health gives you more ward. Or it just gives you more health. You want to have be, you want to have survivability for your character while the Raffler does all the damage, right? That's pretty much it. So what you do on your items is you always go for minion damage. You don't care about anything else. I mean, minion health is cool. Resistances if you can, or health for your character. Block chances, that's also fine. Minion damage, minion dodge rating. This one is, for, for example, kind of insane because it also has 105 wall DK threshold. So wall DK also helps you a lot. Minion health regen, minion damage. As you can tell, that's everywhere. It's minion damage. This is what you search for, because it increases massively the damage output of your wrath lord, and of course you can set up your um, your loot filter to help you with that. Again, idols are about health, increased health, or ward retention if you have. It depends on what you have. Or healing effectiveness, minion physical damage if you don't have anything else to fill up. So this is basically the idea. You scale with intelligence, minion damage. Minion necrotic damage or minion spell damage. Or because he does spell necrotic damage. That, that's what the Wrath Lord does. And of course, ward retention if you want to go for it. Or just straight health or hybrid health. Very simple actually how to set this build up. And it absolutely shreds as you could see. 
So let me know in the comments what you think of this one. I will look. I want to look for something because there is this item that's called Lich Lich Scorn, I think, that turns the Wrath Lord damage into cold damage. I want to try if this is doing anything. If this is useful in any case, maybe not. We'll, we'll see. But um, yeah, this is the next thing I'm going to test out. And let me know in the comments if you like this build, what you think of it, of this great, great big man over here. <laughs> and if you're shredding with it. Again, you really only need this one, this one item. Everything else can be exalted that just has minion damage. So while I have all these uniques, you don't need them. It's a very cheap build if you have this one. And again, it's a 1 in 22 chance to get it from the Rune of Ascendance. Um, and you can look up on Max Roll, for example, where you can actually find it or you can farm for it. That's it. And now let's play some games.